The Australia Day long weekend sees the running of the 50th annual Victorian Hot Rod Show at Melbourne's historic Royal Exhibition Buildings. Hot rodding was huge back in the 1960s and early 1970s, and although the scene has become a little more quiet of late, there's still plenty of great cars and lots of people involved in the sport. The show is run by the Victorian Hot Rod Association, and we caught up with the director of the show, Peter Unsworth, at last year's event. We're trying to bring in the younger generation because obviously we're getting a bit old, so we need the younger families to come in and, and take over, and, and as we uh, move on, that they can keep the show and the tradition alive. As I said, I started coming here, sort of, I suppose it was the late 60s, early 70s. It, hot rodding was really cool back in those days. I mean, everybody was into hot rodding. There were hot rod movies. It was all the rage. But what about now? What about the? What sort of reaction do you get from the current generation when they come and see these cars? The, the problem is today is the hot rods are extremely expensive and uh, the younger generation have gone more into street machines. But look, at the end of the day, they're still involved and they move from street machines into hot rodding and that's what we want. Of course, if you can't afford the real thing, there are some alternatives, like custom push bikes, which have become increasingly popular as an affordable way to get involved with the world of custom culture. Another way, of course, is the world of scale modelling. Well, I came to the Hot Rod Show for the first time when I was about, as I said, eight years old. And as I was a kid growing up, we had model cars. All of my friends had model cars. A lot of the model cars that you see at places like the Hot Rod Show, I mean, I had some of these model cars, but it makes me wonder... What about today? Do people still have model cars? Do kids still build model cars? Let's find out. Sabe Saida, if you can come in. Now, Sabe, you, well, you sell these things here at the, uh, the show. Sabe, do people still make model cars? Yeah, they do. They range from young kids to actual retirees, yeah. So what, what's the average sort of you know, person who comes in and looks for a, a model? I know a lot of people are buying cars that are sort of you know, ready-made up, like the Bianchi sort of cars, those sort of things. But what about these things? Do you still get, uh, still get people coming in and, uh, and building and modifying cars like this? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's actually growing every day. Uh, more and more retirees uh, are, are looking for something to do. And then you've got the older generation like yourself and myself that want their kids to experience what they experienced. And, uh, yeah, more and more people are buying them. Where are the uh, models coming from now? Are they the traditional uh, manufacturers that we grew up with? Absolutely. You've got the same uh, family that's uh, pretty much on their third generation are selling Ravel, Monogram, uh, brands like Italeria still out there. And uh, uh, yeah, basically Ravel is, is one of the most common. So what are the big sellers? I mean, back in my day, it was all, of the, it was all the hot rods and the drag racing cars. Is that still the case? Yeah. Uh, to be honest, actually, it does range. It, it even includes ships, though uh, the cars are definitely the most popular, uh, especially, especially the old uh, uh, American muscle cars. Now, as I said, you know, back in my day, we used to not only buy the, the models, but we used to modify them. I mean, I remember I had a, a model of Big Daddy Don Garlitz's Swamp Rat, but uh, it didn't stay stock very long because the engine out of that eventually went into a Corvette model and, uh, and bits of it went into a Capri and all sorts of things. Do people still do that sort of thing? You know, sort of a bit of backyard hot rodding? Yeah, they do, actually. Actually, it's gone further now. You, you buy die-cast cars, and people aren't happy with the, the standard Bonaro, so they'll rip the motor out and they'll put a blown Chevy in it. They'll take the wheels off it. And, and put wider rims and yeah they actually do up those and in regards to the to, to the plastic kits as you see here they even mount them on uh, uh, slot cars and and they'll go off and race them yeah. so you mentioned the things like Monaro's that that was one thing back in my day that you certainly didn't have is you didn't have any Australian cars but you can get them now can you uh, no the, the Australian cars are made of die cast uh, you got brands like uh, Bianchi uh, Apex, Classic Collectibles, that make die-cast cars. Then from there, people are using uh, individual parts to modify these cars. The 50th anniversary of the Victorian Hot Rod Show will take place on the Australia Day long weekend, January 23rd to the 26th at the historic Royal Exhibition Buildings in Carlton. If you haven't been before, then you really should go. And if you haven't been for a while, then there's never been a better occasion to go back. More power, better fuel economy, a cleaner, more efficient engine. They're just a few of the advantages of having your car tuned on a Dynotech Dyno. To find your nearest Dynotech workshop, go to dyno.com.au. Dynotech by Dyno Dynamics.